through your branding and lead generation. So let's just recap this real quick. Seven to eight percent of your revenue is spent on lead generation and branding. So what does that mean? Lead generation obviously is bringing in leads, right? It's capturing the percentage of your market that needs your service now and you are solving an immediate problem for. I wake up tomorrow. My house is a wreck. My wife had a party. I need I need somebody that's lead generation. I'm going to call somebody. I'm going to book them regardless. Uh, whether it's your company or one of the other three that I call. Now, branding is getting your name out there so that you are capturing the remaining percentage of your market when they are ready to purchase your service for you. Your holistic marketing goal is to get everybody, every one of your ideal potential clients out there to know, like, and trust you. Uh, lead gen is only solving a small part of this equation, but together with lead gen and branding, they complete the buyer's journey. Anyone ever Google house cleaning near me? You ever just go to the browser and type it or house cleaning in my city? You will always see a Molly Maids ad. You will always see a Mary Maids ad. Why is that? Because because they understand the power of branding and lead generation. <clears throat> uh, do they return? Do they get a return on that investment? You know, I surely hope so. Most of our customers do. Um, it's very rare that we ever have an, uh, a situation where they're not. But, you know, sometimes in the smaller markets, it's harder. The larger markets are actually easier to grow a business, at least for us from a marketing standpoint. Um, but they're always advertising. I mean, 12 o'clock at night, one o'clock in the morning, their ads are showing. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, their ads are showing. And they understand the power that it brings to keep their name out there. Uh, when we started our company, it was called Missy's Maids. You know, it starts with an M, has maids on the end. It's kind of similar. We used to get calls all the time. Hey, is this Molly Maids? No, this is Missy's Maids, but we do the same thing. Can I help you? You know, and uh, of course, oh, no, no, I have, I've got a cleaning scheduled with them. Oh, okay, great. Well, if you need anything, let us know. We're here for you. You know, uh, that's because they built this powerful brand. And it's also why they can franchise it out because it's so powerful. They can enter a market. And just the brand awareness of that name shows trust to these customers because they've seen them before. Maybe they lived in Michigan and they moved to Louisiana. Uh, there was one there. And now there's one where they live now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've seen that name. So that that's the power of branding. There, there's a couple articles here that I found that really support what we're talking about, too. Um, and there's a link in, in this PDF, which again, you'll be able to download when we're done. Um, so Forbes, this article here, it talks about how brands are valuable. Many, and this is just a snippet of it, you know, what I thought was important for this, for this uh, uh, summit. So many companies put the value of their brand on their balance sheet. And I don't know if a lot of you guys know accounting, but a balance sheet, is how much your company is worth. So, so think about this for a minute. They put their brand on their balance sheet. So their brand has a dollar value. Their brand, their company name, logo, website, all this stuff has a dollar value. And it really should be on your balance sheet, in my opinion. I mean, if you paid $5,000 for a beautiful website and that thing's generating you money, that's your, that's your brand right there. That's a lead generation machine. It's a tool. It's an asset to your company and it has a value.